Every corporate or consulting style slide is built from a base template that follows a few formatting rules. Take for example this slide from a BCG deck. When all elements are stripped off, you can immediately see that the base template is used in the construction of every slide in the deck. So, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to create a template that matches top consulting and leading firm standards. First, let's open a blank presentation. And for this demonstration, I'm going to be using PowerPoint in Microsoft 365. However, if your version is 2013 and above, you can follow along easily. Now, let's begin by switching the slide to a blank layout. Since our objective is to create a template with custom layouts, we'll be navigating between the normal and slide master view a lot, and there are a few ways to do this. The simplest way is by going to the view tab and selecting the slide master, and then heading back to the normal view by clicking on close slide master view. A more efficient way is to hold shift and click on the normal view icon, and if you want to head back to the normal view, just click on the icon again. The fastest way is with the use of Alt shortcuts, especially if you are on Windows. So press Alt, then W to open the View tab, and M to enter the Slide Master view. To exit, repeat the process by pressing Alt, then M, and then C. Every professional designer uses the Alt shortcuts because it's almost instant in terms of navigation. Alright, now that we're in the Slide Master view, let's select all available layouts. Then deselect the blank layouts and delete them. On the blank slide layout, delete all elements except the slide number. Then select the master layout, highlight all objects and delete them. Now go to the insert tab, select header and footer, enable the slide number and apply it to all slide layouts. Once that's done, head back to the blank slide layout and add a title placeholder by checking the title option in the slide master tab. Now let's move on to colors. So, when designing a template, you want to ensure that all elements are using the theme colors, as this enables the end user to easily make global changes of elements to their brand or company colors. By default, PowerPoint comes with the office color theme, but you can change this to any of the available color themes if you'd like. You can also create custom color themes by clicking on the customize color option. As you can see here, you have multiple options for text, backgrounds, accents, and hyperlinks. And when designing your template with your brand colors, you really only need to change these six accent colors. Now, if you don't have a brand color palette or you're new to color theory and template design, a really good color palette generator is Adobe Color. I frequently use this free tool in generating color palettes because I can easily switch between the different color harmony principles and select my preferred color mode for making any necessary adjustments. Now, to create the color palette, simply select the color harmony principle. For this demonstration, I'll use split complementary, then adjust the handle on the color wheel to your preferred color. Alternatively, if you already have a primary color like I do, you can just expand the color options and enter your primary color using the X code. Just like that, we've created a custom color palette. Now, let's just screenshot the palette, then head back to PowerPoint. Paste the palette as an image and position it away from the slide view. After that, open the customize color options. Let me just drag this down so you can see the X codes. Now, starting with the first accent color, replace it by entering the S code from the palette. Do the same for the second accent color, entering the S code for the second color from the palette. Then continue this process until all colors from the palette are added. Once that's done, what I personally like to do is match the colors for the hyperlinks, so that even if I follow a linked object to verify the source, the color still aligns with all linked elements in the presentation. Now, all that's left to do is to name the custom color theme and click save. With the color theme saved, navigate to the newly created color theme and apply it to the slide master. Delete this image as it's no longer needed. Now, if I select the title place order, you can see that we've incorporated the custom color theme into the template. For fonts, it's a similar process to colors. However, amateur template creators often make the mistake of just switching the fonts directly here and not using the theme font feature. Remember, the sole purpose of any template is to save time. And in terms of a design template, we are talking about reducing the time spent on formatting. So, fonts and colors. All right, let's customize the font theme. So, enter the font theme options. Here you can switch to any of the available office theme fonts or click on customize fonts and switch the heading and body fonts to your preference. 
If you're interested in more unique and custom fonts, Google Fonts is a good font library as all fonts are free to use commercially. So just browse through the library, select your preferred fonts and download and install it on your device. One thing to note from my own personal experience is that it's a lot easier on the end user to go from a common font, a font that's readily available in any creative software, to a unique font. So for this template design, I'll be using the Arial font. Once the font theme is saved, navigate to the newly created font theme and apply it to the slide master. Now, with the color and font theme applied, the next step is to set the default shapes, text and lines. So, select the master layout and on the layout, insert any shape of your choice. Once the shape is inserted, go to the fill options. Here you can see that by default, PowerPoint applies the first color as the accent color. I don't want this, I want my brand color to be the default color. Also, I don't want an outline on every shape that's inserted, so I'll remove the outline. For text in shapes, I want them to be white. Additionally, for text alignments, especially if they are left or right aligned, I want the letters to start or end at the edge of the shape. To do this, enter the shape format options, open the size and properties section, and under text box options, set the left and right margins to zero. After that, center align the text again and set this shape as a default shape. Now, any shape inserted in the template will follow the set format. Next, let's set the default text. So, inside the text box, type your text, apply your preferred color using the color theme. I'm just going to leave this as black. Then set the left and right text box margins to zero. Once that sets, you can also change the alignment. But since most inserted text boxes are usually left aligned, I'm going to leave it as is. Now, set this text box as the default text box. Finally, let's set the default line. So, insert the line on the slide. As you can see, the first accent color is applied to the line and you can leave it like this. But most lines inserted are usually black. So, we can limit the number of clicks for the end user by changing the color to black and also making the line thin by reducing its weight. After that, set the line as the default line. Now that all elements are set, we can delete these objects and start designing our custom slide layouts. To ensure a well-structured layout, go to the View tab and enable the grid lines and slide guides. Next, let's define our margins. So hold Ctrl and Shift and drag to duplicate the vertical guide and position the duplicates on the left and right sides of the slide. After that, adjust the size of the title placeholder to fit the margin. Then go to the Shift Format tab, adjust the size of the text box as needed, and align it on the slide using the grid lines. Next, go to the Home tab. Open the paragraph option, adjust the spacing to your preference, position the text in the middle of the text box, bold the placeholder text, adjust the font size and ensure the text starts at the edge of the text box by entering the shape format options and setting the left and right margins to zero. With that set, you can replace the default placeholder text as needed. Now to finish the layout, I've created object guides to assist with alignments. So let me just paste them from my clipboard. As you can see, these are just lines that visually separate the title, the body of the slide, and the footer elements. Obviously, you don't need to follow this, but since we are creating a corporate template, this follows the slide's anatomy. Now, I'll use the object guide to align the slide number placeholder. First, let me just note the object's dimensions, then match the size of the slide number placeholder with the object, enter the text box options, set the left and right margins to zero, Go to the Home tab, reduce the font size, right align the text, then align the slide number placeholder with the object guide and then delete the objects. For these text elements, you can simply replace it with your company or brand name. Now let's move on to the actual footer placeholder. For this, we will need to insert a text placeholder from the Slide Master tab. Once inserted, delete the default placeholder text and replace it with your preferred prompt. In this case, I'll reserve this for source notes information. After that, enter the text box options, set the left and right margins to zero, and align the text in the middle of the text box. Now, let me just note the dimensions of this object guide, match the size with the actual placeholder text box, go to the home tab, match the font size with other footer elements, align the source note placeholder with the object guide, send the placeholder to the back, and then delete the object guide. 
After that, complete the slide layout by duplicating the horizontal guides to define the body area. With that done, let's make some layout variations. So, duplicate the layout four times. Starting with the second duplicate, let's delete these lines on the layout. Move on to the next duplicate, and on this layout, delete all elements except the title placeholder. Then move on to the final duplicate and delete all elements on the slide. Since this layout has no elements, let's disable the slide number. So, go to the Insert tab, select Header and Footer, uncheck the Slide Number option, and apply it to the layout. After that, go back to the first slide layout. Since PowerPoint recognizes the first layout as the title layout, let's delete all elements, leaving only the footer placeholder. Then open the Header and Footer options and disable the slide number for the layout. Next, customize the placeholder text as needed, then add your text placeholders. For this, I'll be using object guides for my clipboard, so let me just paste them. Now let's add a text placeholder from the Slide Master tab. Delete the placeholder text and enter your preferred text description. Next, enter the text box options and set all margins to zero. Then note the object guide's dimension. Match the size of the placeholder text with the object. Go to the Home tab. Customize the font as needed. Enter the paragraph options. Adjust the spacing of the text. Align the placeholder text with the object guide. Send the actual placeholder text to the back and then delete the guide. Repeat this process to create multiple text placeholders on the layout. Once done, select the picture placeholder from the Slide Master tab and insert it on the right side of the slide. After that, copy the picture placeholder, select and duplicate this slide layout, reduce the title placeholder size, and then paste the picture placeholder. With that done, we've created the layout for the templates. Now let's ensure proper organization by renaming the master and subsequent layouts. I'll just speed run through this process. Once all layouts are properly named, close the slide master to go back to the normal view. Now we can disable the grid lines and slide guides to declutter the view. And if we expand the layout options for the slide in the normal view, we can see that it's using the title slide layout. Also, if we insert multiple slides, we can easily switch them to the newly created layouts and then use the right slide to design our presentation as needed. Take for example, this title slide. I can easily update the text placeholders with my actual text, add a picture from my device using the picture placeholder, and use the crop feature to ensure the image looks just right. So that's how you create a standard corporate template. And as a matter of fact, this is exactly how I created my recently published product, the Analyst PPT Toolkit, which to summarize is a template that gives you access to over 600 best practice slide layouts used by top strategy consultants and leading firms. Meaning you never have to start from a blank slide again. Simply browse, select, and drop in expert design slides built to consulting and Fortune 500 standards without the premium price tag. So, shameless plug, if you're interested, go check it out. The link is in the video description. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.